Okay. Yes. Yeah, so I thank you, Parama Devi, for having me. Uh, Welcome. Thanks for coming. You're giving me yeah. the opportunity to talk about uh, uh, things that could, you know, help um, lots of people. Yeah, um, and, and I really appreciate you taking time out to do this, you know, and uh, I, I guess, you know, one of my first questions to you uh, is, uh, you know, if you could give me a little bit of background of yourself, like, you know, Jagannath, I, I, I'm guessing that this might be associated with a, a Krishna uh, or is it like just Jagannath, like the Lord of the Universe in general? Uh, I, I, I wasn't really sure which way to go on this because I've heard <laughs> this term yeah. used, like you know, for Krishna and Lord Vishnu and all that. Right. So I, I was just curious to know uh, more about you know the the Jagannath. Okay, uh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. This is actually a very big question with mm -hmm. a very big answer. So we start by saying that. Uh, in fact, the Jagannath is the lord of everyone. Jagannath is one who is protecting Jagat, the universe. The so, universe, yeah. The lord of the universe. Now, um, the interesting thing about Jagannath, um, we associate Jagannath with Puri, Jagannath Puri in Orissa, especially. Because Odessa? That, Odessa, yeah. Okay, Orissa, okay. That is the main and most uh, ancient uh, place of the tradition of Jagannath. And uh, the interesting thing is that the deities of Jagannath are uh, three, actually four, sitting on the same level of the same altar altogether. So, uh, but because Jagannath is a a uh, lot of everyone, uh, everyone can see Jagannath and uh, the other uh, three forms on the, on the Singhasan in uh, whatever light they want. So, for most people, Jagannath is Krishna. Now, for example, we have uh, Adi Shankar, probably you heard about Adi Shankar? Uh, I've heard of him, yes. Okay, so he wrote a very famous poem uh, entitled Jagannath Ashtaka, which is mm -hmm. eight verses in uh, um, praying uh, glorification of Jagannath, and he describes Jagannath as Krishna, playing the flute and, you know, having uh, uh, yeah. meetings with the gopis and everything. However, uh, Jagannath Puri has been the center of pilgrimage for uh, every a tradition in uh, in Hinduism. So, for the Shaktas, which means the devotees of the Mother Goddess, yes, Jagannath is Mother Kali. Yes, and in fact, uh, the identity is confirmed uh, in uh, Bhagavad Gita <laughs> when Krishna. When uh, Krishna shows the universal form to Arjuna, and Arjuna says, who are you? He's asking, who are you? And Krishna replies, I am time, Kalosmi. So Kali, Mother Kali, is time. Yes. Personification of time. So if we want to go technical, the, the Gayatri mantra for Krishna has a Bija mantra for Mother Kali. So it's, uh, you know, for some people, especially for Iskand people, this is like, ah, you know, her yeah. heresy, ah, you know, yeah. <laughs> they will freak out. But this is popular knowledge in India. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are some pictures that uh, sometimes maybe, I can, you know, I can, I'm not ready now, but I can post, no, no. I can show of uh, um, a painting in a traditional uh, style of Orissa with a uh, four-armed uh, um, picture of Jagannath who has both the flute of Krishna and the two weapons of Kali. So the identity is there. So, in the same way... But like the, the, the chakra, uh, Sudarshan Chakra and stuff no, or something? No, Sudarshan Chakra is Vishnu. There are also oh. the Sadhuja, uh, the famous Sadhuja uh, Murti, that is uh, 
two arms of Vishnu with the Sudarshan Chakra and, and, the, and the Shankha, and the conch shell, and uh, two other hands uh, as uh, um, Ram, Sri Ramachandra, oh, yes, bow yes. and arrow, and two other hands of uh, Krishna holding the flute, and uh, the last uh, two arms uh, or hands are uh, depicting uh, uh, Krishna Chaitanya as a sannyasi with the Kamandalu and the Danda. So these, mm. there are so many forms. The beauty of Jagannath culture, Jagannath tradition is that everything is there. You will find everything packed. Also, as I said, there are four uh, deities on the uh, main altar in, in Jagannath Puri, in Jagannath uh, tradition. Which one is Jagannath, who is the black one, who is Krishna or Vishnu or Mother Kali. Then we have Baladhadra, who is the white one, who is um, Shiva. And uh, Balaram, the brother of Krishna, and uh, is the, uh, the white Tara, uh, Nil Nila. Uh, the, the form of uh, benevolent Kali, Got it. the white Got it. Tara. Then the, there is another one that is called Subhadra, which is yellow, so you can see the three colors, it's very easy to identify them. And the Subhadra is at the same time Lakshmi, Durga, Yoga Maya, the sister mm -hmm. and the sister of Krishna and Balaram in the mm -hmm. Krishna Lila. Now, the Murti number four is a little strange because it's a Sudarshana chakra. But the Sudarshana chakra is not a round thing, it's like a pole. And uh, you can see when you have some, you know, genuine depictions of Jagannath, Iskun doesn't have. This is the Sudarshan Chakra, but the original Puri temple has a Sudarshan. So this Sudarshan is like a pole and um, it uh, represents Narasimha. Narasimha, the Daru Brahman, the Kampa Vriksha, you know, it's uh, pff, lots of stuff. So if you want to go deeper on the, <laughs> the subject, because oh, yeah, yeah, okay, we just that talk that about be. this for, you know, no, a, no, no, a no week. Worries. You, yeah. you can see, you can have a look, I have pub written and published a book um, that is entitled Puri, the home of Lord Jagannath. I published it in India in 2008, 2009, I think, and it became quite popular there. Okay. Uh, it's there in PDF form, mm -hmm. no formality to download it. I have not uh, made it, uh, I mean, not... Um, um, made the, the lay, layout uh, that uh, Amazon accepts. Okay. Yet. <laughs> but no worries. I, yeah, at least it's there. It needs some work because when I publish it, I did it, you know, a little bit in a rush, but uh, it's there. So I, I hope that as a first question, this can answer. No, yeah, thank you. Thank okay. you. I appreciate next. it. Uh, next. <laughs> next question. So, yeah, uh, you know, I, I, I saw on your profile on in Quora uh, that you mentioned you are able to remember some of your past lives. Oh, uh, yeah. how, how, <laughs> interesting. How are you able to do that? And, or what did you do uh, to be able to do that? Because, you know, I've been trying to remember and, and see... You know how I could do that too. You know, I, I, I'm guessing it might be meditation or, or just a okay. gift. Uh, this yeah. also um, is a long uh, thing that oh. I, I'll make it short. Um, okay. Just uh, last week, I had a two-hour meeting in Italian language with people who asked mm. me the same thing, and I went on for two hours on this only. So, oh, okay. oh <laughs> it's in Italian. I, I will look into that one. Day. <laughs> it's in Italian, okay. though. I, I would oh. not. I would not trust Google Translator, though. Okay. Because okay. The, the, the subtitles by by YouTube are like, oh, what does that mean? You know. Yeah. 
uh, maybe going on if we have if you have time we'll you know just uh, focus on that okay but i think that we can say one mm, single point that is very important now the cycle of reincarnation uh death birth death rebirth uh, re-death and everything is um engineered in such a way to help us become detached from the identification with the gross material body, the physical body. Because even in this life, like as Gita says, uh, in the same way that we change bodies from birth to childhood to maturity, to old age, in the same way we pass in a new body, towards a new body, in the next life, after death. So, it's not that we get into the body of someone else. <laughs> you know, just like uh, in this life, we don't, uh, when we leave the childhood body, it's not that we enter someone else's body. We, it's mm -hmm. still us. It's still us. Yeah. The point is that Whenever we identify with the particular body we are wearing at that time, at any time, it's difficult for us to remember what we experienced when we were in a different body. So, the same thing, how much we can remember of our childhood, early childhood, very little. Still, we know perfectly well <laughs> that mm -hmm. things happened, we were there, we, you know, it was us, but people, you know, usually it's the parents who tell us, you know, the stories yeah. from our childhood. Yes. But we can also remember these stories, these experiences, these sensations, and um, even... Uh, in, in a sensory manner, you know, in a very clear manner, just like uh, leave them again, you know, just now, not just remembering theoretically, but being aware that that thing happened, really happened. We can uh -huh. do that if we detach ourselves from the present body. This is done through meditation. Now, meditation means something much more, you know, simple, you know, much simpler than what people think meditation is. We meditate constantly. Everybody has to meditate. Because if they don't meditate, they will not be able to focus on things. Meditating basically means focusing. Focusing our awareness, our perception, our consciousness. So we have to meditate on our next exams when we study our books in school. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't focus on that, we are not, never going to pass exams. We need to focus. We need to separate our consciousness, our awareness from all the other things, external and internal. And this is the process of yoga, the basic process of yoga the Ashtanga Yoga, Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayama, Pratyahara, Dharma, Dhyana, Samadhi. Pratyahara means withdrawing the consciousness from the uh, whatever is happening externally and internally. Yeah. So, when we can withdraw our consciousness from the identification with the present body, and from the, uh, the bombing of <laughs> impressions and messages and inputs and everything that comes from the outside and the inside, then this is the purpose of yoga. This is the purpose of meditation. In this state, we can become conscious of everything. Because the Atman, the Self, 
is consciousness. Yeah, uh, is you know it, the thing is it's it's like it's so hard for you know for me I, I've read this you know from know, various uh, it's so hard for me to I guess associate that my Atman is is different from the body because it's like <laughs> yeah. uh, the reason why I say that is like I don't remember anything from my past life right so in some ways I feel like like our Atman is using our body. To enjoy it, what it wants, it's kind of like a parasite, <laughs> where it's enjoying. Okay, okay, okay. It. This is the problem. Yeah. Uh, the problem is that they told us that we are the body and we have a soul. Yeah. Now, calling this idea atma instead of soul is not solving the problem. We need to understand that we are the soul and we have a body and a mind mm -hmm. you know the problem is that this consciousness is definitely not there in Abrahamic and post-Abrahamic ideologies yeah but the thing is Paramadevi it's like if I if I were to accept that I am the soul like yeah. you know then my, my problem then is to say okay after I die I won't remember anything in my next life anymore. Why, why not? So I feel like the the true me, yeah, is the one who's who's being done wrong here. You know that that it's kind of like um, I don't know how to explain it. It's like it, you know uh, I would love to meet my loved one again. You know next life uh, and and enjoy with them. In some ways, like I kind of I kind of like the concept of Christianity. If you think about it, where you die, you go to heaven, and you're enjoying the love with God and your loved ones and your friends and family, there's a heaven there. But I know that might not be real because, you know, there is a concept of reincarnation in Hinduism. Okay. But okay. it's just our body is the one that's doing all the work here. You know, we're the ones <laughs> who are who are suffering. We're the ones and going through all the pain. And, no, no, no. The, 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 you body, know, the body has some part of the pain and the work, but it's like a car. When you see cars going around, you don't see the driver. No. Because the driver, especially if the, the windows of the car are dark, mm -hmm. you, you don't see the driver. So you think that it's a car that's doing everything. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the idea of the afterlife is not that simple. There are so many things that can happen from one life to the next. Now, now it's not about uh, what religions teach. Because religions teach whatever people, uh, you know, think, <laughs> whatever people uh, put together as uh, theories or teachings or uh, doctrine or whatever. We should be interested in the actual reality, the actual facts, mm -hmm. not the opinions. It's not that Hindus have some opinions, so when they die, they go to some place. Mm -hmm. And the Christians have another opinion, so when they die, they go to some other place. The concept of reincarnation was there in all the ancient cultures because it's very easy to see and um, it has, you know, in the last uh, few decades it has been very scientifically proven. proven. Like you heard probably, or maybe not, uh, names like Brian Weiss, I don't know. Ian Stevenson, Jim Tucker, no. If you didn't hear about Brian Ways, you have not heard about the Ian Stevenson and Jim Tucker. Now, these three people were uh, top-level psychologists and psychiatrists who had some experience and then went, uh, you know, uh, full throttle into the research about reincarnation and memories from previous lifetimes. And they wrote a lot of books. I can send you some links 
uh, you can find a lot of stuff on YouTube as well. Of uh, you know, they, especially these people, especially Jan Jan Stevenson, you know, has done a lot of work, and uh, even the mainstream academics, you know, in in medicine, mechanistic medicine, that don't uh, even recognize the existence of soul or consciousness, you know, they have, you know, accepted his work. <laughs> Because he has done a very scientific research by uh, digging up the actual stories of hundreds of cases, especially children. Children tend to remember past lifetimes much more easily up to a certain age, after which their identification with the new birth becomes stronger because of the family pressure because of social pressure pressure because they get actually more uh, you know rooted in in, in the in the new the new body but while they're still young many children remember things they could not know otherwise and not only that they um, some of these cases studied by these people these, uh, these researchers um, have uh, brought up actual, you know, um, stories, evidence with details that have been checked. So, you know, it's impossible to say that these are just coincidences. Okay. This is uh, the, the research that has been done. Now, after this research, Many psychologists, psychiatrists have started to use the system of uh, hypnotic regression to treat some patients who had, you know, serious psychological problems that could not be explained by any trauma in this life. Mm -hmm. And they had you know, amazing results. These are especially, for example, when people have a very strong fear of fire, of water, of the dark, of uh, falling. Oh yeah, when I was young, I was really, when I was a, a child, I was very afraid of the dark. I would hate, go hate going to dark places. Exactly. But this is not because you had any bad experience with darkness in this life. Uh -huh. So the point is that if we go in history, we go and, and, and find out lots of people, uh, especially in, uh, in the, you know, starting from Middle Ages onwards, Mm -hmm. um, were uh, buried alive. And uh, some uh, on purpose <laughs> and some uh, unknowingly because they seem dead. This problem came to notice when uh, the um, cemeteries in big cities in the West, starting from England, from the UK, uh, the cemeteries started to be too full, <laughs> so there was no, not so much place to bury people. So they started to dig up the old graves, you know, and collect the bones and put the bones in a smaller place called the ossuary, you know. So they started to dig up the, the, <laughs> the old coffins. And while opening the coffin, sometimes they were horrified to see that the bodies had a totally different positions. The, oh. the remains, not the bodies, because you know, <laughs> the remains what? had very different positions, and sometimes there were very deep scratch marks on the on the uh, coffin. Yeah. You know, with traces of blood and everything, it means that this this you know person woke up, you know, came back to consciousness, 
and was buried. Gosh, that is scary just to think about that. that exactly. That is so scary, yeah. So what this, you know, we are getting there now. <laughs> so this is the reason of the uh, popular saying, saved by the bell. You heard about saved by the bell? Yeah. From where it is coming? I, I, I'm not sure. I, I, I personally thought saved by the bell was, uh, it came from boxing, where, you know, where, where the... But possibly, I, I don't know. I mean, possibly that uh, you know, also from yeah. school that you know when, school, when yeah, you're yeah. getting, you're getting, you're getting, uh, you're getting the last the, minute yeah. assignments and then the the school <laughs> rings and then you're just thinking, yeah, yeah. Okay, you so many, so bell. many. But originally, what happened after they discovered this problem, they started to bury the dead people with the string inside the the, the coffin that went outside. To a small bell. Oh. So, if in case someone <laughs> woke up, they could pull the string and someone could hear them. Oh. So, you, we can still see them now. These bells near the graves, they're still there, especially in UK, in England. Oh, I would love to go see that. Yeah, well, I think you can find on Google, you know, the okay. photos and everything like that. You, you can go and see. So, basically, you know, you can imagine how this kind of situation can, you know, carry a, a, a trauma. Mm -hmm. Because it's a very traumatic experience. Yeah. And uh, when we die we carry our mind with us. We don't carry our body because the body you know, <laughs> cannot be used anymore, so we leave it behind. But we carry our mind. So these memories are pushed in this, into the subconscious in what uh, is called in, uh, in yoga, in yoga science, it's called the karma shaya, the uh, causal body the karmic body. So the karmic body is a part of our subtle body, our mind, that contains all the memories, all the experiences mm -hmm. from ever. <laughs> of course, we don't keep every small details in the same position. So the subconscious arranges these memories, these experience, these pieces of knowledge in bubbles. These bubbles are protected by emotions. It's like a cyst. You know what is a cyst, medically speaking? Yeah. So this is keeping, the, this uh, bubble of emotions are keeping the memory protected, isolated, so that we do, it doesn't come to our consciousness. But all these um, memories and emotions are tied together by a logical thread. Logical means about issues. So when we start, the, the subconscious keeps track of everything. So, so if so, since you mentioned bubbles, right? So. Could it be possible that sometimes people are able to remember their previous lives? Because you know how sometimes you see two bubbles like they're connected together? Is it because that's what possibly it, may have uh, happened? or Actually, it's uh, more like uh, that the bubbles can pop up to the surface. Oh, okay. And this can happen, for example, um, when uh, you experience in this life something that is very similar like your fear for the dark yeah like uh there's a place here in america which i go to sometimes and i just have a very deep affiliation with it maybe because of family sometimes i think like i wonder if i was here in a previous life possible or something you know i don't know but um but then you know it, it makes me wonder which which kind of rolls over to my next question that you know every everyone says you know you know if you look at the eastern philosophies the the whole point is to detach 
from our material body, this material existence, and be one with the Lord. You know, for for Iskon people, for example, they you know the the goal is to be reunited or go back to Godhead, right? Okay. So so my my challenge to them or question, I guess, is is this that if our whole purpose is to go back to God or or attain moksha or whatever, we must have came from Him at some point, right? If if there was an origin, uh you know, like, I don't know if I'm making sense or not. So if we came from him and our whole point is to go back to God, why did we even leave him in the first place? He must have been very yeah, boring very for us to leave him yeah, and, and now I, we have to go back to him. good question, but the conclusion is not good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so the answer is that we are given in this world a lot of examples of how uh, everything works. As uh, many philosophers have said, as above, so below. So we as Atmas, Jivatmas, start as seeds, Anuatma. We don't start completely developed. It's just like a child. We evolve through different species or creatures and, or whatever. Yeah, we evolve through different uh, life, <laughs> lives mm -hmm. until we develop all our potential, mm -hmm. until we grow up. We start as like, uh, you know, <laughs> monocellular uh, spiritual things. But then, but then, Parama Devi, why, why can't we develop all of our potential in in one long life like why can't we live thousands of years in one life to develop that potential because rather than taking different forms and not knowing who we were like we always keep no, forgetting we, what our we, previous no, no, self we, was we don't need to forget uh, Neil, you forget even in one life uh -huh. it's it's not that if we have one long life of thousands of years means you remember all your life of thousands of years. You remember even what you had yesterday for lunch. You have yeah, to no, make you... an effort. <laughs> yeah. You know. So remembering is not a matter of staying in the same body or in the same mm -hmm. life. Because you can remember previous lifetimes easily. Easily. You know in some cases even more easily than what you know than remembering your childhood so how, how do i do that then how can i remember ah, one good okay. aspect of a previous lifetime i don't want to remember anything bad like how someone killed me but like <laughs> like can i remember something we, good we remember okay we can remember something good but depends on our subconscious because mm. our subconscious is like a secretary who mm -hmm. is keeping you know, the, he's managing the, the archives, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. So, we remember what our subconscious puts on our table. What our subconscious thinks is more important for us to remember. If you develop a good relationship with your subconscious <laughs> and convince your subconscious that you want to remember something nice, you know, it's all between you and your subconscious. Now how do I do that? How do I first have a good relationship? Oh, this is the first step. The first step, we need to develop a good relationship with our subconscious, which is we have to listen to our subconscious. You know, I, I try, and, and to be honest with you, sometimes I hate my subconscious because yeah. I feel like that's the main, I feel like that's the main enemy there. You know? That's uh, exactly what you should not do because you know your subconscious actually wants to help you. The problem is that if you don't reprogram your subconscious, if you don't program your subconscious, your subconscious will take its programming from things that he believes that uh, you consider authorities. I consider what? Authorities. Authorities, yeah. And you see how dangerous that can be. You know, so your subconscious, sub everybody's subconscious is taking ideas 
from what you look at and, and think this is an authority. Mm. Now, unfortunately, the chance that we have good authorities that want to actually help us, they understand us, that help us, or they know what is the purpose of life and how we should live and everything, these chances are very small. Usually we get toxic authorities hmm. that try to scare And I guess that's what happened to me. Hey, 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 welcome. You know, this happens to more, you know, 99.9% .9 of people. So don't feel lonely that, <laughs> you know, it's normal. Normal, not in the sense that it is as it should be, but it's the norm in the sense that practically we are all in the same boat. It's mm. a lousy boat. <laughs> it's a crappy boat. It's a very bad boat. But still, we are more or less all on that. Uh, so, so then, like, if if if, if we evolve, uh, is, is there not like you know? I, I'm I'm worried like. What about heaven and hell? Like, I mean, like, okay, okay. is there, is there, because I know, like, I, I read, like, on the Garuda Puran, for example, right? Yeah. It talks about hell, like, how people go and, and go through okay, different. Okay, okay. Okay. This is a typical case <laughs> of cultural superimposition. Now, <laughs> excuse me. Naraka, Naraka, that is uh, generally translated as hell is not a place mm -hmm. it's a state of mind this narica where people are said to go they're not going they are like in a nightmare but then what is it that when, when they talk about parama they be like oh you know they're gonna pierce you with different things and yeah, and, and make you drink hot boiling water yeah. and, and they throw you in the fire due to the sense of guilt uh -huh. So the point of Naraka is to um, influence people to feel their sense of guilt and become aware of the crimes they have committed, of the sufferings they have given to other beings. So the problem is that in Abrahamic religions, hell is first of all it's eternal yeah which is stupid you know secondly is uh, destined to people who disobey the, the priests which, which is stupid the Naraka actually you can feel guilty only if you created if you gave suffering and damage to other people a crime is not a crime not to obey the priests or to obey you know what they say god said the point is they are playing on guilt they're building a false sense of guilt so you get convinced you're guilty even if you're not and this is what you experience when you die if you have this sense of guilt you enter into a sort of nightmare, you know, until you realize that you can do better. You're really sorry. You're really sorry and you want to do better. Then you get the next opportunity to take birth again. Now, Abrahamic religions lack this knowledge because they outlawed the concept of reincarnation. Anyone who was speaking of reincarnation was, guess what? <laughs> you know, uh, eliminated. It makes me sad, you know, to think that how many people in this world may have died thinking that they're going to hell, you know? Of course, of course. The damage is enormous. But still, that, you know, the people who died before, we cannot do much about them. Unless they have taken a new birth and we can work with them now. You know, we should not, uh, you know, focus too much on the past. We should be aware of the past, 
but we should not focus too much on the past. We should focus on present. We should be proactive. Now, what happens after when you die? Now, um, you heard about the uh, Tibetan Book of the Dead? Tibetan Book of the Dead? No, I, I have not. Todo, the Egyptian Book of the Dead. I have heard. I've, I've heard of it in a movie, in the ah, movie, but Indiana Jones <laughs> or something. Yeah. No. No. Uh, okay. Well, you know, it's a, it's a real. <laughs> It's, it, it is there. It is there. Now, um, okay. Let's let's talk about the Tibetan Book of the the, the, the Dead. That is uh, more uh, um, available, more easily available for study. Now, um, the the Bardo Todo. This is the the, the title in in Pali language explains that at the time of death one enters a state that is very much similar to the state of dreaming. It's just like uh, what you do when you dream, especially many people can also do some astral traveling when they're dreaming. They get out of the body, you know. Mm -hmm. It's much more common than people think. For example, if you have ever experienced the feeling, while dreaming, the feeling of falling, sliding, flying. Flying, flying. I've dreamt of that. So many. No, those exactly. are one of my favorite dreams, is this, the flying one. This is because you are getting out of the body. So, but you are not uh, um, completely Detached from the body because the body is still good, still working, still uh, you know functioning like a car. You know, uh, yeah. when you when you dream, when you go out of the body, it's like when you you know you you reach uh, some place and you get out of the car and you go and have a walk. You're still connected with your car. You know, you still have the keys. You know where you left it. <laughs> you know, and so you can go back at any time. Now, death is when the car gets destroyed. You still get out of the car, but the car is not functioning anymore. But what, what if it's a severe accident, then the person inside the car dies too, though? No, because the Atman never dies. The Atman, we never die. We are like, uh, you know, ejected from the <laughs> from the vehicle mm -hmm. it's it's automatic you know because it, it's like um, we can make the, the example the soul is like a magnet and the body is like uh, iron powder okay so the iron powder is kept together by the magnet but the iron powder becomes oxidized so we constantly need to change our cells in our body. Right. You know, and this is why our bodies look different. Because that they change, you know, constantly. The change of the cells is a change of body. But because the soul is still in the same place, it's changing the body uh, while wearing it. Mm. Now, when the body cannot keep together anymore, usually because the oxidation process becomes too fast, you know, faster than the renovation process. It's called old age, you know. Or uh, in an accident, the total, uh, you know, uh, sheath, the, the total um, container, the total mass of the um, iron powder that has been conglomerated breaks apart and the magnet rolls away. Hmm. The magnet never changes. But now it's outside the body. So, as just as we can experience 
a state very similar to that when we dream and we go out of the body during our dreams. We have so many experiences. Sometimes we have what we call lucid dreams. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you experience lucid dreams. Usually everybody does now and then, especially, <laughs> you know, when we are sleeping, even very soundly. And we need to go to the bathroom. Yes. At that point, your subconscious takes you to a place in the dream where you see the bathroom. <laughs> you see the first. You know what? That has happened to me where I feel I, my body wants to go to the bathroom and then I'll dream about that I have Everybody to urinate. Everybody does. Everybody yeah. does. Same. Now, the yeah. point is what is the meaning of lucid dream? While you're dreaming, you realize you're dreaming. This is called lucid dream. Now, the shamans have done that for many thousands of years. You heard about Carlos Castaneda? No? I think I've, it sounds familiar. It sounds but I'm familiar, not... yeah. He was a, a writer in the 60s and 70s, and mm -hmm. he wrote a lot about shamans shaman journeys and uh, hallucinogenic mushrooms yes yes you got it you, you, you. <laughs> I, I i've heard of the hallucinogenic Castaneda. mushroom yeah Castaneda wrote a lot of stuff about that because he went and had experiences now shamans and uh, um, using you often using hallucinogenic uh, substances herbs in general mushrooms herbs like that have a long, very long historical history of experience of astral traveling, going, traveling outside of the body. It is a fact. Mm -hmm. Now, you can do it, I can do it, anybody can do it. You can do it better <laughs> if you have better knowledge, if you have better experience. You know, it's just like you've always go, gone uh, around in a car. You know, and suddenly you happen to go outside, the, to get out of the car. Your experiences while outside the car will be depending on your knowledge of what is outside the car. Yes. So you can actually build on that, getting knowledge from other people who had experiences, and then you experiment on that yourself. So this is the difference between uh, opinions and science. Okay. Science is something that you can experience, experiment yourself, but you have to follow a protocol <laughs> and you have to get some previous prior knowledge, previous knowledge. Mm -hmm. Because many people think that yoga and religion, spirituality, blah, 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 are not science. <laughs> now, why they say that? <laughs> that is their opinion. They have not ex made any exper experiment following the actual protocols and based on exper you know, experimental knowledge, you know, traditional knowledge. Traditional knowledge has been experimented by millions of people for we don't know how many thousands of years. Mm -hmm. We just have to get the basic knowledge, just like, you know, we go to, to a science, a biology class in, at the university. <laughs> we need to learn, first of all, you know, not just uh, considering the teachings as opinions. You have to accept them at least, you know, as hypotheses. At least mm -hmm. hypothetically, you have to accept them. Otherwise, you can never make a proper exper experiment. Yeah. And you get the basic knowledge, you get the protocol, the process, and then you experiment on it, yeah. you know, and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, and I guess the reason why that happens is because majority of us are all programmed to look at life or the entire world uh, through a Western template, right? Yeah, through a Western, uh, we say, yeah, I, I, I would, um, 
I, in general, I try to make a distinction between the concept of Western and the concept of the global present globalized mainstream culture that is fundamentally Abrahamic and post-Abrahamic. Yes. Yeah. Because before 2000 years, you know, 2000 years ago, more than 2000 years ago, Western culture was <laughs> pretty different. <laughs> And if we go back 40,000 years, <laughs> Western culture was pretty different. In the same way, when we speak of Indian culture, we have to, you know, pinpoint in which period, in which context we talk of Indian culture. Because, you know, for example, you are, you are one example, but even in India, even among the, the uh, Orthodox Hindus, you know, in the last 200 years, all the Orthodox Hindu family, almost all, I will not say all, because some may not have, but, you know, wh whenever they have sufficient money, they will send their kids to the mission schools. You know, the Xavier school, yeah. <laughs> They, they yeah. all, they all went, you know, even, even hardcore uh, Hindu activists, uh, they still use the word idol to refer to the, the deities, which is like, no, please. <laughs> and yeah. they, and they, you know, speak disparagingly about the Western culture, but they got the worst of the West and they got the worst of the East and they still going on for more wars of the West. So mm -hmm. when I, you know, when we talk about the Western culture, usually I, like, you know, I think my yes. <laughs> I say, oh, what? <laughs> yeah. Because lots of people in India, or people on Indian culture, descent, they are still laboring under the delusional idea of the Hindu race. Yeah. From the Aryan invasion theory. Uh, yeah. They still think that Hindu is a race. No. It's a no. DNA. You know. It, it, of course, no. <laughs> we know. You know. I know. Few other people know, but the large mass of ignoramuses. <laughs> You know, yeah. we we have stupid people in uh, everywhere. You know, yeah. <laughs> nobody, no, no culture, no group, no nation has the monopoly on stupid. <laughs> stupid is uh, all colors. <laughs> all colors, <laughs> exactly. Are, I mean, all colors. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Well, uh, we need to. What I'm, I've been trying to do for the last uh, 15, 20 years or now and I'm still doing. I think that the most important thing, what we have to do, is to make a distinction, a viveka, a neti neti, if you will, you know, to distinguish what is the original Hinduism <laughs> from the <laughs> hodgepodge, mishmash, kitchery <laughs> that uh, is called Hinduism today. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, separate uh, the concept. You know, for example, we need to blow up the idea of uh, Indian versus Western. Yeah. Because if we keep going on with Western civilization, Westernization of India, okay, so you don't like Westernization of India, so drop all the political parties. Because. Mm -hmm. Political parties are not Vedic at all. <laughs> There's no trace of any political party until the British came. Yeah. There's something extremely recent and extremely colonial. <laughs> you don't yeah. like the West, drop the, all the political parties. Drop the computers. Who invented the computers? Yeah, you're going to have to get rid of a lot of... Western no, technology and everything, yeah. And the point is that too many people, they think that just by pasting a Hindi name on Western technology, it becomes indigenous Indian technology. Yeah. And then they say, 
the Western scientists plagiarize from our Vedas. Okay, yeah. let us show where in the Vedas you find the schematics for a computer. Sure, let, let me see. Yeah. They have been trying to do that with the Vimanas, <laughs> you know, yeah. the spaceship. Nope, <laughs> it's not working. I wrote a book about that, you know. Because people are very superficial, as I said before, stupid is everywhere, you know, yeah. and especially when people uh, rely too much on race and birth and everything, they tend to become lazy because they, they think that they already know everything by birth. Yeah. All the knowledge yeah. and understanding is in their DNA. So they don't need to study. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like saying, I'm clean, my DNA is very clean, so I never need to take bath. Yeah. Now I need to wash my clothes, because I'm yeah. clean, genetically. <laughs> so, you know, <clears throat> that's stupid. <laughs> so that's a big yeah. manifestation of stupid. So, going back. Oh, yes. Tell, tell. Oh, no, 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 I was going to say that, uh, unfortunately, you have a hard stop at 11 a.m. Uh, uh, I was wondering... No, not, not uh, really. My hard stop uh, is uh, in uh, one hour and something. Okay, do you mind if I just get my phone charger, I mean, my uh, my course. laptop charger? Sure. I'll be right back. Give me give me five minutes. I'm no going to go problem. get it. Oh, we are back. Okay, yes. so... Uh, we were talking about uh, uh, incarnation and uh, um, what happens uh, after death and all stuff. Yep. Until now, everything is clear. You have any questions, any objections, anything? Uh, I probably still will. I, you know, I'm a very oh, complicated sure. speaker, oh, unfortunately. Sure. You know? oh, sure. No problem. No problem. Yeah, I mean, it's just. You know, I, I guess, uh, you know, is it, is it, uh, like, I guess another question that I have, uh, this has nothing to do okay. with reincarnation or anything, okay. right? Like, uh, in, in, I think I read, like, somewhere in Hinduism, like, you know, how, how they used to value boys, right? And and I guess, you know, culturally, if you look at, like, how they valued having boys more was oh. because of, the of of men in that time. But, like, I read somewhere, and I don't know if this is true, where if you have a son then uh you know that that child or that boy can continuously do like the the ancestral prayers on your behalf after you die so that your lineage can continue but i i find that somehow a little wrong so i mean what if someone like me you know for example i have a daughter i don't have a son what, what happens to the folks who have daughters then i feel like that's kind of um not fair you know okay now it is actually not really true in the okay. sense that um, there is no rule that stops daughters from taking that role or any other member of the family or any adopted member of the family from okay. doing that. Now, the problem <laughs> is that um, people forget a lot and uh, they go with the Kali Yuga mentality. <laughs> so, when the people identify with the gross material body, they lose the concept of uh, uh, sun in the, uh, in the Vedic sense. Uh, adoption has always been a totally normal system. We okay. find tons of examples in the Shastra, in Puranas, Itihasas, and everything. So, um, in fact, <laughs> the lack of uh, fundamental importance uh, on, uh, of uh, seminal descent Mm -hmm. is explained in several passages of the Shastra by um, distinguishing the word putra from the word uh, mutra. What's mutra? Mutra. 
Mutra. Mutra. Putra and Mutra. <laughs> Putra means sun. Sun. And Mutra means urine. Oh, Mutra. Okay, okay, got it. So Mutra and Putra come from the same place. But they don't have the same quality and the same effect. Yeah. So, you know, that is a very famous uh, example from the Shastra. We should not think that the Shastras are all very polite and bigotedly, you know, you know, Puritan. <laughs> Actually, you know, Krishna in Bhagavad Gita uh, mm -hmm. uses words like imbecile. <laughs> You know, mm. stupid, vimuda. You know, muda means stupid. Vimuda means really stupid. <laughs> we could say imbecile. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, and there is a lot of, uh, there's no, no bigotry about using, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, concepts. Such, you know, normal biological functions. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, in actual Orthodox Hinduism, going to the bathroom in the morning is described as a religious duty. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, we call it ritual, but it's really a ritual, a ritual a religious duty, because it's a purification of the body. Hmm. So when the 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 Shastra, the, the puja manuals, you know, the Sadhana manuals say your morning religious duties, they start with going to the bathroom. That is already a religious duty. And the same, similar, you know, lot of other biolog normal biological functions. Now the idea that uh, the son is uh, a, a male child is uh, more uh, desirable than a female child has developed only recently relatively recently okay especially starting yeah. to develop when the um, islamic uh, conquest came to india mm -hmm. because daughters became a problem yeah, hey, you know, you know. I actually, I remember where I got this uh, story from. So uh, it's, do do you remember this character in Hinduism called Jarad Karu? Uh, no, ja Jarad Jarad Karu is his name, and and I guess he he uh, was a Rishi's only son, and he decided he had uh, you know wanted to remain a Rishi all his life and do meditation and austerities. But then one day he was walking down some path and he saw his ancestors, or in his dream, he saw his ancestors hanging on a tree upside down. Oh, and no. there was a rat cutting on the, the ropes of each of his ancestors. And he said, you know, what, what happened? Well, you know, how can I help you? He said, you know, he's like, we are your ancestors. And, uh, you know, you're not performing your duties of having a son so that we... Uh, okay. You know, can obtain uh, you know eternal life and all that I kind of stuff. I suspect that uh, yeah, the translation was not about having a son, but having a child. Okay, because they mentioned a son, and then I was like, okay, well, so he ends up having a son, but then I was like, okay, what if he would have had a daughter? Would that have not served the same purpose? Yeah, well, the point is usually the daughter goes to live in the family of the husband. Yeah. So, you know, there is not the same cohabitation that the son has with his parents. Yeah. Because, you know, husband and wife come from two different families. Yeah. So, unless they decide to go all live together in a big house, both families, yeah. the, someone will have to decide where to go. Yeah, because I, 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 I was thinking, like, okay, like, if I die, then who would be doing all of that for me? You know, because my anyone, daughter, anyone, obviously, if anyone, she gets married, anyone, really? Anyone, anyone. You can okay. adopt people. For example, I adopted a boy, you know, in India, and uh, he's uh, still there taking care of the property and whatever he can do with that, you know. So it 
Since it was, it has always been completely normal. Mm. You can get anybody. My, my daughter can do it on my behalf too. Your daughter too. can do it. Your daughter can do it. Yeah. The point is, usually women do not have so many duties. Now, people confuse not having duties with not having rights. But it's not the same thing. In the sense that women have rights, have more rights than duties. <laughs> In the sense that the main duty of women is to take care of the children. Mm. That is the most important duty that anybody can have in a society. Mm -hmm. Because children are the future of society. Yes. If you mess up with the, your children, nothing you can do in society can, uh, you know, trump that. Yes. So, you know, and, and children are so usually you know, if you do things properly, you know, they can be even better than us. This is a natural tendency and desire of all parents, of all good parents. Mm -hmm. You know, they want their children to become better than themselves. Absolutely. To have better opportunities, to become better people, to have more success and everything. Unfortunately, parents don't know how to do that <laughs> and sometimes they make a serious mess you know we can say even often they make a mess but the point is the point is that uh women uh have the right to do any job they want but not at the expenses of you know neglecting the children Mm. Especially if a woman doesn't have children, <laughs> the problem is solved. <laughs> you know, she doesn't need to take care of children. She can always adopt and take care of adopted children. But uh, if she decides not to have any children, she can do other stuff. But what, what about people who, who don't ever, let's just say they don't have any children, right? Yeah. And from that point, no one ever does their ancestral prayer. What happens to their Atman? I mean, does that mean that they're no, 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 just stuck somewhere that, that in, in consideration, order? That consideration is um, a social consideration, not a spiritual consideration. Okay. okay. So the spirit, will, the, the Atman will still continue to take yeah. on the next life yeah, or whatever it needs Atman to do. can continue the natural progress and evolution, the karmic journey. You know, unless, of course, it, it feels so much guilt, <laughs> you know, whether the guilt is justified or not, it doesn't matter. The guilt is there. You know, mm. the feeling is there. And that is, you know, creating the nightmares. Mm -hmm. Now, there is also a possibility that... Uh, um, another, another possibility why the Atman is not uh, taking a new birth immediately is not because of a nightmare but because of the dream so of the what? dream the, the, you know the, the, okay. they stay in other dimensions could be have you can call it heaven <laughs> you can call it whatever you want and uh, usually family members who are attached to the other family members they wait for them. They wait mm -hmm. for them, you know, and then because the time has a different quality. You know, when you die, you have the opportunity to take birth immediately again. Mm. But it's your choice. You know, depending on your level of consciousness, you can be, you know, more or less free in your choice. Mm. Because we also have a, what to say, some, some uh, bank account, karmic bank account. So when you totaled uh, your car, <laughs> your previous car, okay, you 
and get a new one. How much money you have? <laughs> you know, that will determine what kind of car you'll be able to get. Yeah. Or you can decide to keep walking for some time, or, you know, just sit on, on, a, on a bench in the park and wait for your friends. That doesn't mean that you have to go to hell. You know, heaven and hell are not physical planets. We experience them here on uh, in our body. Yeah, yeah. We not only that, but there are other dimensions in this universe that are not physical, like this dimension. Just like when you dream, you go here, you there, you see things, you see meet people and everything. You're not experiencing a physical gross physical reality you are experiencing a different dimension that doesn't mm. mean that it's not real mm. now of yeah. course of course what you see is created is projected by the mind your mind or the mind of other people because the mind is one <laughs> like mm. uh, who was that Jung the collective mind collective consciousness, you know, the mind is a material element, just like water. So the mind is one field, you know, mm -hmm. we can call it biomagnetic field if we like, you know, but it's, it's not just biomagnetic, it's more than that. We can observe the effects of the mind on the biomagnetic you know, instrument, measuring yes. instrument, but it's more than that. So the consciousness expresses itself through biomagnetic influence, but it's more than that. So the Atman is traveling within the mind. The mind can be registered, you know, can be, can be measured by uh, biomagnetic uh, uh, instruments, frequencies. You know, light is the same. Now, the problem is that uh, the popular understanding of uh, science is still very mechanistic. You know, people usually, <laughs> it, you know, don't understand even the concept of quanta, you know, which is a very established mainstream uh, physics you know, academic concept, you know, try to explain the quantum to people, you know, the Schrodinger's cat, you know, it's, it's, you find it in popular culture, you find it in memes, but nobody can <laughs> understand what is the meaning. Got it. So w we know that the Vedic science was much beyond that. Mm -hmm. For example, we were discussing the gods of aliens, as like we were saying before, you know, um, the Vedic science used sound in the same way as the laser technology uses light. So by combining sound on a quantum level with the biomagnetic, you know, pseudo biomagnetic field of consciousness, you. you can do stuff that <laughs> The modern scientists cannot even imagine. This is how most of the Vimanas were working. Most of the, the, the astras, the, the divine weapons were working. You cannot call them, oh, it's a plasma weapon. It's a nuclear missile. No, <laughs> it's not. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. the Brahmastra was not a nuclear bomb. Absolutely not. You know, the description... Of, of the actual Shastra are, are, you know, showing very clearly it's a, totally not a nuclear missile. Unfortunately, people, some, you know, people with a poor fund of knowledge, <laughs> we could say, you know, uh, who want to glorify Vedic culture and Hinduism, they make a mess, they make blunders, because they copy and paste 
stupid stuff written by, you know. <laughs> yeah, there's so many things uh, that has, you know, so many people putting in, uh, you know, different uh, opinions and researches that, you know, I think I think the Vedic culture is just lost in translation now, you know. And... Uh, no, it, <laughs> it's the only culture that uh, still exists. Yeah. We, if we go and try to find the other cultures, the other ancient cultures, they have been raised to the ground. Yeah. And it's yeah. practically impossible to rebuild them. But Hinduism still has some people who actually mm -hmm. have some, you know, solid knowledge. Got it. And this is why I spent, you know, about 35 years in India. 25 permanently resident in Jagannathpuri, which is a very strong yeah. and powerful holy place. It's the center of Tantra. It's yeah. the, the origin, Orissa is the original source of the Tantra. The Udiya okay. Tantra is the most important. Tantra yeah. means power. Got it. So you can imagine. Hey, uh, Parama Devi, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, please, but uh, I'm going to have to get going in a bit. Sure. Uh, I, I don't know uh, if we can continue some other time, but uh, unfortunately I have to feed my daughter soon. Sure, so. sure, sure. No problem. No problem. Whenever you want, we can uh, we can stop. And okay. uh, we can continue next time whenever you want. You just let me sure, know sure. with a little bit of advance notice. Okay. Uh, will you be uploading this video on, on YouTube? or? Yeah, actually, okay. I was thinking to upload it in one piece only. But okay. then I had to stop it. <laughs> and oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, technically, I'm not able to put it together <laughs> to do the oh, editing. Okay. Uh, but okay. I, I, I'm, uh, what to say, technically, digitally handicapped. <laughs> no worries, no worries. So, okay, yeah. So we can start, uh, we can start the recording now. Okay. If you are okay with that. Yes, yes, I'm okay. okay. And then... Uh, if if you are some able somehow able to send me this video, I would love sure, to just sure, review sure, it sure. again. Definitely, you know? definitely. Okay, so let me stop. Join the Okay.